Can y'all hear Abby the Laddie? She apparently has a whole lot to say tonight. <laughs> okay, so I just put the finishing touches touches on the presentation for tomorrow, and I checked. Last night I told y'all that I had 40 people registered, and I just checked, and I have 77 people registered for tomorrow. So if you are not registered, then you need to get registered because 77 people are ahead of you in line to find out how to get started in a real estate portfolio. And when those 77 people start buying houses, you're going to, and they're tagging me in post and they're celebrating their wins and they're making all this money and they're retiring and they're, you know, they're not selling cars anymore. They're not selling uh, MLM products anymore. They have a real live real estate portfolio that they are working on. You're going to really wish you'd been on this webinar. You're going to really wish you'd figured out what these people figured out because think about it like this. If you keep trucking along doing the same thing that you're doing right now and you've got a, you know, little 401k at your job, I'm going to be 32 this weekend and I'm telling you right now, Social Security not going to be around when I get ready to retire. So I have to make my retirement myself. And even if you have a 401k, you got what, 50 grand, 100 grand, how fast is that gonna go? I told you last night that 401ks are dead. It's dead money in 401ks. The only way to have live, real, residual money that keeps paying and paying and paying and paying is to have real estate and to have your tenants paying and to have it on autopilot so that you can enjoy your beach house or you can enjoy your grandkids or you can enjoy you know whatever it is you're wanting to do in retirement. But forget about retirement too. Come here, see me. So forget about retirement for a second and just say you're a small business owner. You're an entrepreneur. Maybe you're even a real estate agent. Sometimes those closings don't happen as fast as you want them to. So what do you do? You dig into your credit card. You dig into your line of credit on your house. You dig into anything and everything you can find to make the bills meet, to make the ends meet, until your closings start happening again. But when you have a rental portfolio when you have rental houses and they pay you on a regular basis a steady line of income just starts pooping into your account every month and you get really used to it it's really nice to wake up you know on the first or wake up on the fifth or wake up on the 15th or whatever day you decide is when your rent is going to be due it's really nice that before you even roll out of bed you've got more money in your account than when you went to bed the night before and that is not going to happen from your 401k guys my internet died out I think i'm back the other thing is if you have this money coming in, even if you're not using it for retirement right now, but you could use that money that's coming in right now to float yourself in between closings, in between clients, in between big million dollar deals. Because if you have people paying you, if you have tenants and they are paying you every month and you've got two, three, five, ten, twenty thousand dollars coming into your account every month, that's money you can use maybe to fund your side hustle. Maybe you've always dreamed of opening a yoga studio, but you just don't have the funds to do it because you can't save up enough money to be able to open this yoga studio, but if you have a rental portfolio coming in and it shoots you enough money every month that maybe you don't need to make a profit at your yoga studio for the first six months. That would take a lot of pressure off of opening the yoga studio. Or maybe you just have uh, two or three houses and they bring you an extra thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars a month and that's enough for 
you, if you're a real estate agent, that's enough for you to put into Facebook ads or business cards or business luncheons or, you know, just regular ads, maybe in the yellow pages, maybe in, not the yellow pages, but, um, you know, you could use that money to fund your other job. If you, one of my ladies is very techie, she's super smart, and she's just not as into real estate as I am yet. She's in my class now. But she makes websites and she makes apps. She has, you know, six or seven or eight different people that work for her. So what happens if she has this big contract and she's been, you know, planning on that, paying through the winter, and then something happens and that contract gets voided or it just doesn't happen or it falls out or it didn't get all the proper signatures or, you know, something happens somewhere else. If she has a rental, rental portfolio bringing her money every month, then she can keep her people on the payroll without having to dig into her pocket. Like when tenants pay you every month, you can use that for whatever you want to. You use it to pay off your mortgage, you use it to pay off your student loans, you use it to pay off your own credit cards, you use it to pay off your primary house. Imagine this, if you're paying a thousand or twelve hundred dollars a month on your mortgage for your primary house, and a lot of people tell me this all the time, yeah, well, as soon as I get my primary house, as soon as the mortgage is paid off, as soon as it's free and clear, then I'm going to start investing. Well, y'all, I talked to an appraiser yesterday, and he said that last month they paid off their house note. They don't owe any more on their house. And I said, great, are you going to start investing now? And he was like, no, I, I got two kids in college now. I got to pay for that. So now it's going to be another eight years before he can start investing. By then, he's really knocking on the door to retirement, and he's lost 30 years of his life that he could have been investing and, okay, so let's say that you've got this $1,000, $1,200 mortgage payment that you are responsible for through the bank because you bought a primary house the regular old-fashioned way, FHA, 20% down, however you got into this house, you got a mortgage on it, right? And you have to pay $1,000 to $1,200 a month. Well, wouldn't it be cool if you could figure out a way to buy a house with no money, no credit, no banks, or you bought just some random land, or you bought a piece of apartments, or you bought something that brought you an extra $500 a month, or it brought you an extra $1,000 a month. You could use that $500 or $1,000 to pay down on the principal on your mortgage so that instead of owing $150,000 on your house after, you know, 12 months, now you owe $12,000 less because it came straight off a of principal. You made your mortgage payment, yes, but you also paid straight towards the principal. And you didn't have to clock in for that. Somebody else just gave you money for that. You're going to pay off your primary house twice as fast while you're building a portfolio at the same time. There's no reason that you should be waiting to start your real estate portfolio. I don't know who said this. Uh, it might have been Napoleon Hill. It was definitely somebody that's smarter than I am. And this was said a long, long, long time ago. But you don't wait to buy real estate. You buy real estate and wait. And if you don't know how to buy real estate, you don't know how to buy that first house, you don't know how to get started, you don't know what the first step is, the first step is the webinar that I'm doing tomorrow night. It's going to be awesome. You're going to learn a lot. And if you've heard some of my other webinars in the past, I'm digging out some examples that I haven't used before. And I'm going to be really open and really real and actually kind of raw. That's not a good word. Exposed. That's not a good word either. Um, vulnerable. I'm going to tell you a couple stories that even the women and the couple of men in my Rockstar program right now, they've never heard these stories. This is the kind of stuff that I've you know, kept bottled up inside, but that you're probably going to experience in some form or fashion at some point in your real estate investing career and there's no sense in me hiding that. So I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, 
and the ugly. And no, that's not a Alabama football joke, okay? We're going to go over all of it tomorrow, 7.05. The link, Julie, if you're on here, Ashley, if you're on here, will you put the link up? And I will, if not, I'll put the link up here later. But I have 77 people ready to find out how to start a real estate portfolio. And there's no reason you shouldn't join as well. And if we hit 100, maybe whoever the 100th person is, um, maybe I'll find some sort of free bonus for them or something. So share this, encourage your friends because y'all, we're surrounded by real estate all the time. Okay? Think about it. Thanksgiving is in two weeks. What are you going to do? You're going to go to somebody's house. Whoever has the biggest house that the most people can fit in, that's where we're going. We're all going to talk about what we're doing. We're going to catch up on the last year. We're going to, you know, pray together. We're going to eat together. We're going to enjoy each other. Wouldn't it be nice if you go to Thanksgiving this year and you're like, all right, y'all, I'm going to do it. I'm going to become a real estate investor. Okay, your uncle's going to give you a hard time. Your sister's going to try to talk you out of it. Your wife or your husband's going to tell you that you're an idiot. But you know in your heart that you were born and destined to be a real estate investor. And then next year at Thanksgiving, we'll have dinner at your house. The whole family can come over. You can show them pictures of what you flipped. You can show them pictures of what you've rented. You can show, drive them by your apartment complex that you got now. And they're all going to say, I knew you could do it. I totally had faith in you. You know, I told Aunt Martha that you were totally going to be able to do this. I had faith in you the whole time. By the way, you want to teach me what you know? So, this Thanksgiving, they're all going to question you and call you an idiot. Next Thanksgiving, they're going to want to know how you did it and how they can get started. All right? If you have any questions, you're welcome to send me a private message. That's cool. I will be less than annoying tomorrow because I have to practice. <laughs> All right? So send me some questions if you have them. But for the most part, I think everything will be answered on the webinar tomorrow. It starts at 7.05 sharp on the dot. And it's going to be good stuff. Y'all go ahead and register. There was 77 already. And whenever we hit 100... Um, and why don't y'all put some comments on here? What do you think I should give away when we hit a hundred registrants or people registered for the webinar? What should we give away? Y'all got anything? You got any ideas? I was thinking we could do like an extra 30 minutes with them or we could do, uh, I don't know. There's gotta be something though that we could give away for whoever's the hundredth person to register. Oh, there's the link. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate it. All right. I'm hopping off. But the only way to get out of this rut that you're in right now, the only way to get out of this job that you're in, the only way to finally quit working with sellers and buyers as a regular real estate agent is to become an investor. Y'all been watching me and you've been watching other investors for years and years and years and it's time you got in the game. Because, and this is a secret, that they don't really want to tell you. Investors don't want to tell you. Agents do not want you to know this. November and December is the best time to buy real estate because people, banks, motivated sellers, heirs, whoever it is, they want it gone by the end of the year. They don't want to pay the taxes. They don't want to be responsible. They don't want to carry it again. They are ready to make some deals. And if you get started now, you can get a hold of some of those deals. Because what happens in January and February, people start seeing their income taxes coming back. And now we got buyers. Our sellers are now buyers. Our people that weren't buyers in November and December suddenly are buyers in January, February, and March because they got their income taxes back. If you don't have a house to sell those people, you cannot make money off of that. Okay? And lots of people, when they get those big chunks of income taxes back, they want to put it down on a house, but they got bad credit. 
Guess who has houses and she accepts people with bad credit? Guess who's not really that nervous to get rid of three houses right now because she knows come January and February and March, people are going to be throwing huge deposits at her. That's me again. If you don't have anything to offer these people, you're missing out. And if you aren't buying aggressively in November and December, it's going to be a year before this magic happens again. So get a hold of it while the getting's good. All right? Hit that link, sign up. I fully plan on having over 100 people on the webinar tomorrow night, and it's going to be amazing. Bye, y'all.